Welcome to Inspiring Business with your host, Mark Bullock, who is the co-founder of Videosocials.net and of VideoInterviewPodcast.com. In every episode, Mark interviews business and organizational thought leaders who share their stories of how they inspire others by making a difference. You can find this show on Videosocials.net and YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, and almost any podcast platform of your choosing. Welcome, and today I'm excited because my guest is Steve Fritzen. Steve is a four-time author, host of the Be That Lawyer podcast, and business development coach for lawyers. Welcome, Steve. It's great to have you. Hey, thanks, Mark. Happy to be here. Terrific. And and in in all fairness, um, this is actually the first time that we're actually meeting, and that is totally unusual for my podcast because. I have lots of people that I've gotten to know over the years uh, that have been clients or members of the video socials, et cetera, et cetera, that, um, you know, are consummate professionals that are trying to make a difference in the world through their products and services, which is what the show's about. Uh, and one of them is uh, whom I hold in incredibly high esteem is Allison Williams. And Allison uh, referred you to be on this show. And that just goes to show the power of real networking, you know, and, and, and real relate business relationships that, um, that really speak to the character of, of individuals, because, you know, all I did was take a look at your website, take a look at your podcast. And I said, yeah, this, this guy is somebody that I, that, that I want on. So, um, how did you get to know Allison? Well, I think the dirty little secret about podcasting is we get to meet some of the most amazing people uh, when we get on their show and they come on our shows and things like that. And that's how I met Allison. And by the way, you know, hundreds of top, you know, legal professionals, experts, rainmakers, you and I are just meeting. So like, this is, this is something that most people don't realize about podcasting, that it's not just a great branding tool, but it's a great networking tool. And so that's how, that's how I'm meeting some of the some of the most amazing people that I just never would have met had I not been on podcasts or had a podcast. And it's amazing what those connections can do um, you, you know, and, where, and where they lead to and the synergies that, that they, they get explored about that. But so you are a, de a business development coach for lawyers. You know, you've written for, but I'm not going to repeat, repeat the whole introduction, <laughs> but you know, you, you live in this, you live in this world with attorneys and, and, and helping them raise the bar. Uh, for the, for themselves, um, I'm also a, a, a business and executive coach, uh, so I have I have that background, um, and been working with with lawyers for ooh, uh, 15 years, something something like that. Um, not exclusively, but we're certainly hundreds of them. Um, but Steve, what's your story? How how did how did this come to be? Well, it it didn't happen. Uh on purpose, um, you know, coming. So just to, I don't know how far back you want me to go, Mark, but I started selling shoes in high school at a store that you're going to know. And anyone under 40 or 35 won't know it's called Kinney's. Remember yeah. Kinney's? Oh yeah. oh yeah. The great American shoe store. Okay. Yeah. And it was in my neck of the woods. So I got a job selling shoes and I enjoyed the interaction. I've always been someone that enjoys meeting new people and, and having the opportunity to serve them. And, Oh, what are you looking for today? And, you know, then, then of course I found out about commissions and then things went a different direction. I was like, Oh, I think you probably need a purse. I think you probably need anti-slip pads. And so my sales career started at a very young age leading into getting out of college, just to essentially get back into sales. And I moved up the food chain, selling bigger products, bigger tickets, services, pro, you know, all types of cool stuff, eventually leading into franchising. And that's really where I, I kind of, converted from being a sales guy to being more of a business guy, because it wasn't just about selling a business. I had to help get someone into a business. And then once they got into the business, I had to then mentor them, coach them, assist them to actually be successful. And I was rewarded and compensated based on their success. So I had all these, you know, pushing factors of not only trying to sell and, and, and get people into a, the business of their dreams, but then helping them actually go out and Hey, let's go out selling today. And they'd be like, what? I mean, yeah, let's go. And I take them by the hand and we go to strip centers and sell stuff. And, um, and then I met a coach who, uh, found a, a number of gaps in my game. I was always kind of a top player and thought I was sort of the, the bee's knees, if you will. But he was like, no, you're doing this. These are the things I'm finding in you that could actually make you a lot more money and be a lot happier. And I was like, holy crap. 
in six months of working with this coach, I had basically done more business than I had in my best year. And I was like, holy mackerel. So then I had to tell my, this, this boss I had, I was like, Hey, guess what? I'm, I'm going to leave you and I'm going to go do what this guy does. So that's how I started in about 2004, by the way, still without even a, a blip in this radar that lawyers were a thing. Um, I grew up with a lawyer. My father's a retired attorney and, you know, mm -hmm. being put on the cross daily as a teenager was kind of, you know, the, the thing that was happening. And, um, I just never really thought of lawyers having to sell services because he never did. Mm -hmm. I actually interviewed him in my, in my 200th podcast, Mark. And in doing so, it actually came out that in fact, he was doing a lot of marketing and sales. He just didn't know it or call it that hanging right. out at the courtroom right. and, and building relationships and, you know, plopping himself in an office with a bunch of other lawyers and being smarter than them and them referring stuff to him. He just did never thought of it. Like we think about it. Right. 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 2008 happens super successful in my, my company called, by the way, at the time called Sales Results Inc. Does that sound like a name that lawyers would like? <laughs> Sales Results Inc. <laughs> right. And I had the logo with the arrow going up in the green and the blue. It was like mm -hmm. hyper aggressive, great for entrepreneurs, terrible for lawyers. And so when I started working with lawyers, um, they got over it, but eventually they were like, you know, Steve, this isn't really a great you know, um, you know, logo for us. We don't feel comfortable even carrying your materials on the train. So I was like, okay. So I decided after consulting and, and teaching them how to uh, specialize that I had enough business in the legal space to basically push my chips in and say, look, I'm just going to hyper specialize in working with lawyers and law firms. Right. And that's all I'm going to do. Business development, not marketing, not this, not that. And that's been what I've been up to. And even more recently, since COVID, I've stopped working with law firms. I don't take on law firms. I only work with highly ambitious attorneys and all over the country, all over the world. And that's really been uh, kind of the, not a shortest story I could have given you, but, you know, reasonably short story of how I came to be. Well, it's, it's fascinating because uh, we both uh, share the, um, the basic foundation of sales. Uh, as, 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 as coming in, you know, from, from a, a young age, I don't know that I was as young as you when I, when I, when I first started selling, but, you know, I went the military career instead, instead of, uh, uh, instead of college, but, uh, my first job out of, out of, uh, uh, out of the military, uh, was working at a locksmith shop of all things. And, um, they had safes that were sitting there collecting dust and, and, you know, I just started talking to people about, you know, that came in to get their keys made and, you know, and, and all this kind of stuff. And before you know it, I sold out all the safes that they had and they were bringing in container loads of, of safes. And, and, and it was just having a conversation with people and, and not trying to pull something over on anybody, but, you know, everybody needs to protect their valuables. Right. So I, yeah, um, I have a safe. Was, everybody should have a safe and, and hopefully fireproof something, right. You got all your exactly. documents in there and passports and you know, cash or whatever. Yeah, so, totally. So, you know, fast forward, um, uh, it wasn't long before I ended up buying a business, uh, you know, and, and, uh, I told an equipment rental business and, and, and then learning how that I needed to know how to actually run a business, uh, and understand the marketing and the, you know, the accounting and all the other stuff. So, um, that was the first of five companies uh, that, that, that I have formed and, and or created. I've done well. I've gone bankrupt. I've, I've uh, you know, rebuilt, uh, et cetera. I always tell clients that I'm always, uh, no matter where they're at, I've probably been there myself. So um, the, the interesting thing is, is that, but starting with that seed of understanding that if you're not out there making your services available for others. If people don't know that you exist because you've built yourself as a better mousetrap and waited for the world to be the path to your door, as an example, or, or being unwilling to ask people for the business when it's, when, when it's time for that to happen, right? So, yeah. um, but what are you teaching them that's getting them results with their law practices? Because you're absolutely right. They don't see themselves as salespeople when in reality, if they're not truly and authentic salespeople, they're, they're going to see very little success. Right. And I'll take this in two directions. The first direction is the obvious. Every lawyer has said dozens of times, they never taught me this in law school, right? right. They never taught me this at the law firm. And so here they are, they're being judged, not necessarily just how great of a lawyer they are. That's part of it. The other part of it is what's your book of business? What clients are you bringing in? How are you invaluable to the firm? 
And lawyers, some lawyers pick up on that and run with it and they're doing millions and they're doing great and they have total control and freedom over their careers. And as you know, the majority don't. And they're just keeping their head down, hoping for the best. And in some cases it works out, in some cases it doesn't. But ultimately, that's really what's important. Okay, so that's number one. Number two is I teach a methodology called Sales Free Selling, which is also the title of my first book. Um, and it's a real quick read. It's up on Amazon. I wrote it as a story similar to the goal. Uh, mm -hmm. similar to, um, the, the go, the go giver. So it's easy for people to read and, and put themselves in that scenario, but essentially lawyers hate sales. I hate being sold to like, I, I just sit there and cringe when someone aggressively tries right. to sell me. Even when I get an email, like I've already deleted three or four emails this morning, somebody just directly trying to sell me their services, which great. Okay. I get it. Good shot. But you know, you didn't, identify even they think I'm a lawyer in many cases. So it's like, Hey, you don't even know who I am. It's clearly a robot. That's right. okay. Well, all right. Good shot. Not going to, not going to happen. Um, so lawyers don't want to sell their, they, they think it's a dirty word. They, they don't want to be an ambulance chaser. They don't want to do the things. So I say, great, let's not do that. Let's not sell. Let's not convince. Let's not pitch. Okay. Let's take a different approach where we create a plan we work with proven methodologies that are sales free and let's focus on meeting the right people, targeting meeting, and then let's walk them through a buying decision where we ask questions, we listen, we demonstrate empathy, we show understanding and we see if there's a fit and the mm -hmm. lawyers that I work with go, oh, thank God. Oh, thank God. There's a, there's actually something that I can follow instead of winging it and hoping for the best or I can follow it and actually get to a result where the client wants to engage them. And what did they sell? They end up selling very little. They just, there's a good connection there. Or they recognize that this isn't a fit and they move it to a no. And we talk about how that's okay. And you know that, and I know that most lawyers don't. And, and, and we save time. So look, you're either building business or you're saving time. They're both good things, but right. it, it, it's, it's, so I, my last book, the most recent is called it um, legal business development isn't rocket science. Yep. That doesn't mean it's easy and it doesn't mean it comes naturally. And it doesn't mean that it, you have to spend some time learning it. Look, if I want to become a great cook or chef, mm -hmm. I can throw a bunch of things in a pot and cook it up and hope for the best. That's what lawyers are doing right now. Right. They're listening to, okay, I think people like chicken. I'm going to go throw chicken in a pot. That doesn't mean you're going to make the best chicken someone's ever tasted. So why not follow a chef, follow a recipe, go through and actually take, you know, cooking lessons in the kitchen and learn it. So that's what I'm essentially doing to, to turn things around for lawyers who are just out there scrambling. Terrific. And, and uh, I think it was Sharon Drew Morgan that wrote a book years ago on buying facilitation, uh, which is something that I really attach to. So, I mean, there's, there's incredible um, uh, overlap in how we think, uh, which is, you know, stop trying to sell people stuff. In other words, what you what are, our natural internal definition of sales is, is trying to convince somebody to do something that they don't want to do. Yeah. No, stop doing that. That's not, that's not, that's not what's going to get you what you want. Start trying to help people see, as you said, if what you provide is a good fit and your personality, character, et cetera, is, is, is complementary to their personality, character, and then, okay, now we've got a fit. It's just a matter then of, of uh, is there a budget? Is, 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 you know, are the funds available to do what we need to do? Um, and, uh, and developing a plan to do it. And then the sales process is really almost not even a process anymore. It's just, it's just a matter of it's the next logical step in moving forward. Um, and, and before I get too deep into, you know, what might be some of the approaches that you have to, 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 to business development. I did want, kind of want to bring up, you know, what we do and how we met Allison and, and, and that ended up, you know, um, um, spawning this relationship. Um, and that is with videosocials.net um, and then our newest service, which is videointerviewpodcast.com. So videosocials.net is, is where we take lawyers as well as other coaches, consultants, financial professionals, et cetera, and help them to come out of their shell and be available to the world out on YouTube and on websites and on blogs and, on, and, and, uh, and then with video interview podcasts, that's also uh, into, the, into the entire podcasting platform. So 
what we found was that you know the the stats are are in and have been in for several years now. Video is where it's at. Um, less than one tenth of one tenth of one tenth of one tenth of the world's population has a YouTube channel, um, and so you are standing out. You are uh, putting yourself out there in a way that uh, only a tiny, tiny fraction of uh, the world is doing, and all of the various social media platforms and channels, including YouTube, are um, Facebook, LinkedIn, etc., are are uh, giving preference to video. So the fact that you're seeing a lot of video on whatever social media that you're engaged in is not because a lot of people are creating it. It's because their 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 algorithms are pushing it out there. Um, uh, when they when they do see it because it is so much more engaging it is you know the ability for us to get to know each other on screen um and, and see each other's mannerisms and hear how we speak and, and get a familiarity that allows that no like and trust relationship to build so um but being on camera is not natural it's it's just not it's not something that that all of us uh first of all know how to do second of all whether we recognize it or not we may have anxiety and apprehension about doing it so we created video socials which allows people to come in in a small group five to eight people uh, typically uh, and we take turns uh recording our two three minute uh, video blog post videos for our websites videos for our social media channels etc uh, and we learn from each other and we and, and and so it's an experiential environment that we're learning and practicing and at the end of it we've got a product um and so that's videosocials.net we'd love to have uh, any of our viewers come as a guest uh just go to videosocials.net click on the um uh, guest tab at the top of the screen and then beyond that and i'm not going to get too deep into it is videointerviewpodcast.com which is really kind of what's next because this is a longer for what we're doing right now is a longer form of content it is two people engaging in a conversation rather than just one you know uh, uh, one of us sitting there as a talking head etc um we're exposing each other to our networks to each other's networks in in doing this um and we're endorsing each other in that in that process as well so all that being said, there's a lot of logistics. As you know, you do a podcast. There's a lot of logistics around that. And many of our attorneys, coaches, consultants, et cetera, et cetera, one, don't have the technical expertise, two, don't have the time to be messing around with all of these logistics. So we handle all that for them. That's videointerviewpodcast.com. But Steve, you know, back to what you what you were talking about. So can you demonstrate some of your approaches to how you help them to develop their business selling without selling as it were? Yeah. And I mean, I think if we go back before we even have to talk about a selling process or in this case, a sales free selling process. Okay. Um, it's important that lawyers consider, you know, putting a plan together. And mm -hmm. so there's a number of elements that go into creating a plan and it can be a two or three page plan. But the problem is like for a lawyer just to go out into the world and say, well, I'm going to speak and I'm going to write and I'm going to network and I'm going to do videos. and I'm going to do this and that and the other. And they're not going to do any of them well, or they're just going to get lost and dazed and confused within all those different modes of communication, modes of marketing, modes of business development. And so putting a plan together where we just sit down and we talk about who are your targets. Mm -hmm. And from my perspective, there are really two targets that are critical for lawyers to consider. Mm -hmm. Number one is who are the prospects? Who are the actual people that you're looking to get in front of that can use your services? And I try to go deeper than, well, that's CEOs and GCs. Okay. Well, that might be a beginning point. All right. Well, GCs in, 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 in what area, what area of practice are you in? What, what, GCs are you talking about? Where are they located? Um, is it just the GC or is it other people around the GC? Is it the team? Is it the assistant GCs, et cetera? What size organizations are you, are you looking to go after? Are you working with the Googles of the world? Or are you working with the, you know, 50 person operations? Um, so there's just a lot of, 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 of talk about, about targeting. All right. And just to give you an idea for me, I'm targeting individual lawyers that are highly motivated to grow their law practice. That could be a solo, that could be a big firm lawyer. It doesn't matter. As long as they have the right mindset, they keep their ego in check and they're open to learning, like that's mm -hmm. who my targets are nationally, okay? Right. The second one is even more important in some instances because it's who are the best strategic partners? Who are the connectors right. for those 
targets for those prospects. So, you know, looking at, um, for example, a divorce attorney, they may not even have realized that most of their business is coming from estate planners. It's coming from financial advisors. It's coming from therapists. And they're out networking with anybody, just killing their time and meeting, you know, meeting after meeting after meeting with, you know, anybody that, that wants to meet with them. Well, if, if time is money for lawyers, which it is, it's billable hour, right, in most cases, then why not hyper-target the strategic partners you want to meet or in, the, or in the actual prospects you want to meet and focus on where are they, how do I get in front of them, how do I get connected to them? And so it's something as simple as that and working that through might make the difference between someone investing hundreds of hours of unproductive, unusable time. You can't get your time back. You can make more money, but you can't get your time back. And so I think part of the plan needs to be really isolating those targets. And I'll give you one quick example. Real estate attorneys are struggling right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. The interest rates are up. Deal flow is down. So what are they doing? Well, they're just sitting there, you know, take this, taking some time off. Well, no, you should be out marketing to agents. You don't get your business from, you know, the, the people on the street. You could, you could, but who actually gives you the deal flow? Well, it's the agent. So let's come up with a plan around how do we get in front of more agents and get that deal flow up because things are down right now. Well, that's going to happen in a plan. So I'd say that's sort of like the most important starting point is creating a two or three page plan that's easy to follow. Doesn't have to be a 50 page MBA style plan. It can be very simple with objectives and strategies and tactics and actionable things and deadlines. And then of course, the accountability that I provide and you probably provide to achieve those, you know, benchmarks. Well, and you just touched on, I think one of the most important thing is because anybody can develop a plan, whether it makes any sense or not. Um, but hopefully they're going to engage with somebody like you that can actually help them create a plan that's actually actionable. Yeah. Um, and then, but actionable is, is really the door opener versus the accountability, right? So, I've often said, you know, we human beings suck at holding ourselves accountable, uh, especially if it's to something that we don't really want to do, right? Yeah. Um, and marketing and sales are, guess what, especially for attorneys, at the bottom of the list of what their priorities are to focus on today, right? So that, that you know, I, I, as a coach myself, I know exactly what you're talking about. And no, we're not here to cool, crack the, rip, the whip but we are there to help people understand the value that they're trying to get out of doing the things that they may not enjoy, at least initially. But the other thing, and, and you tell me if, if, if you experience this, is my experience is most people, as an example, don't want to be on video. They just don't. They, you know, they, they may see that they really need to be, but they really don't want to. And they don't enjoy it because of nervousness or lack of confidence or any number of things. But once they get in and they get practiced and they start to they start to find some level of comfort through that practice and they start getting feedback and they start seeing results. Well, I've literally seen people who were terrified of being on camera and a year or so later, you know, they're getting results and they're getting great feedback and they're getting great comments and they're getting clients and they're and and they've now gotten comfortable. They've also gotten comfortable in the room with those that are helping hold them accountable. And so there's relationships that's forms, there's networking that's happening. And all of a sudden they realize, Hey, this is come, this is now second nature. This is just part of my life. I'm just doing this because it works and I actually enjoy doing it. Are, are, yeah. are do you, do you see people that actually enjoy that net with that level of networking and that level of, well, I mean, I think you're, you're kind of defining like what, like how life works. I mean, everything we do is uncomfortable at the beginning. And then once we, you know, try it and, and get validation and, and realize that, you know, what were we, what we saw, you know, first time I got up and spoke to a group of people, I think I was shaking, you know, uncontrollably. And now I could get in front of a thousand people and I don't even think I would like bat an eye. In fact, I, I, you know, I get in front of people all the time. Don't, I don't even bat an eye. It's like, I'm talking to you right now. Right. So everything has you know, it's all about habits. It's all about getting comfortable and, and business development is something that, you know, people think, oh, that's a natural, you know, natural rainmaker, natural born salesman or whatever it is. You know what? It's a learned skill. I work with some of the most introverted, uncomfortable, risk averse people in the country. Okay. And they end up becoming assassins because they just get comfortable and they, they, they understand that when they try something and the world doesn't end, 
they actually got a positive response trying something <laughs> that wait a second i just got valid it's like it's like when a judge says you know the right thing and you go wow that was pretty good i gotta i gotta use that again right now now they get validation that something's working and then they just want to they just want to double down and triple down on it but it's it, it is hard to get into habits it is hard one of the things i'll give you a, a little trick too mm. something i do with my clients is it's not just me holding them accountable, which I do. And I have them fill out a journal and in a tracking system and I get their mm -hmm. data every single week. But isn't it also helpful to have a workout buddy? If I'm going to, like I go, mm -hmm. I went to Pilates this morning. I'm one of the few men that does Pilates. I mean, I'm in a room full of women every, you know, three times a week. Okay. It's fine. Okay. Cause I'm getting out of it. But I know that I signed up for it. I know that they're expecting me and I got to be there. I'm holding myself accountable, but it's not like I have the, you know, the, the, you know, the equipment here in my house. I think if it was here, I'd probably blow it off. The fact that I'm paying, I can go and, you know, the teacher's there. Yep. She knows me. Okay. And I, what I do is I set up my clients with accountability in, in, in like business development buddies. Right. And so what they'll do is they'll say, all right, every Wednesday morning from eight to nine, we're going to get on a zoom. We're going to say what we're going to do for the next 45 minutes. We're going to hit mute. We're going to go do it. And then we're going to come back and say what we did. And they make this into a habit. They're now re have a reliable yeah. friend that they can count on to yeah. do this with. And that's, you know, sometimes what it takes to get it done. Because if it isn't done and you continue to blow it off, you're not developing good habits. What you're actually doing is breaking down on a subconscious level how you feel about yourself. If I know I've got to go to Pilates and I just blow it off and blow it off and blow it, right. I'm not, I may not realize how bad I'm feeling, but guess what? I'm not feeling so great about myself because I'm letting myself down over and over again. So we, we need to get into positive habits and we need to have some buddy help us if that's what we need to get over the finish line. And that's, it's just a simple, easy way for lawyers to, it could be someone at your firm. It could be a friend of yours. That's a solo. It doesn't matter. You just have to agree. This is important. We both need to do this and let's figure out how to get together once every other week to do it. I, I, I can't agree more. Obviously we're both coaches and we both yeah. have experience with attorneys. So, so uh, you know, we, we could, we could go on like this forever, but, but the, but the reality is there's a couple of seeds that are, that are in there. Number one is we're so concerned with, you know, looking foolish or be, or, or, or uh, being perceived as a failure in some way, shape or form. The only failure is not doing it. You know that that that's that's the that's the ultimate failure. If if you try something and you, and and you and you keep trying it until you until you, you get it right until until it until it starts to work for you, um, that's not failure. Those are just fumbles and 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 missteps along the way that you needed to go through to get to where where you wanted to go. I often say this with 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 video socials. It's like if the recording doesn't go off and you're not happy with it, don't publish it. But don't stop recording, right? And and we've 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 had people that have walked in the door that that will will you know hit it out of the park from 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 day one, or will you know really kind of lack confidence, but they're willing to they're willing to practice, they're willing to record because they know that they they don't have to publish it if they if they don't want to. That allows them to relax and engage with the other people in the room because we do it via Zoom conference. And so they're having a conversation with other people, just as you and I are having a conversation, just as we would be sitting across the desk. And in doing so, and what you're talking about in this accountability partnership that you're encouraging people to create is they're doing it together. Right. Right. So there's a tremendous synergy here in, in, the, in the fact that our whole business model is about doing it together. Right. Rather than trying to do it on your own. And I often say, you know, on, on the video side, and I don't want to take over the conversation, but, you know, sitting there talking to an inanimate object when you're sitting in an office by yourself, it's not something you want to do. It's it, you might be able to force yourself to do it a couple of times, but you're not getting feedback. You don't have an audience. You don't you, you, you don't have the you don't have an engagement. And you don't have that accountability partnership where somebody is sitting there going, okay, well, the phone's ringing. I've got to stop. You know, I got to do this now. Oh, well, this client needs something or I got an email or da, 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 right? We do things as human beings. We do, we find our best productivity when we've got somebody else that's involved in what we're doing. And sometimes that's literally like in the room together doing it at the same time. 
right? Yeah. And yeah. even though we may be doing entirely different things, the fact that we've got somebody, as you said, on the line, I think that that's brilliant. I, I love the fact that you're actually bringing people together to work on stuff and be in the same space virtually at the, at the same time. I, I, that's fantastic. <laughs> I'm going well, look, to I mean, I wish I, I wish I made it up myself. I mean, we, you know, we do this, we do this in our lives, you know, anytime we want to, yeah. you know, if I'm dealing with a, you know, if I have a, you know, I'm meeting with a, a therapist or I'm meeting, you know, anybody that, you know, a dentist, we're together, you know, it helps, you know, I'm not going to get yep. my teeth clean without a dentist. So, you know, we, sometimes it helps to just have someone that is got the same mindset and needs to do the same things a different way uh, to get together. So again, that's one of, you know, hundreds of different ways to build habits, but it's one where you're not, because I think if we're accountable to ourselves, it's just easy to blow it off. If we're accountable to someone else, especially a friend that need that expects us to be there, you know, we're just going to make that, we're going to make that effort. Absolutely. Absolutely. So Steve, how do people get up, get a hold of you? Uh, we're, we're going to attach links to, you know, whatever channel that you're view, viewing or listening to this podcast on. Uh, there'll be links, but uh, how do you want people to reach you? Yeah, I think the easiest way is to just go to my website at fretzen.com. It's F-R-E-T-Z-I-N.com. And you can fill out the contact form if you want to talk with me. Um, there's a live chat there. I've got uh, my email is easy. It's steve at fretzen.com. Believe it or not, not taking phone calls. Not, it's I'm, not that I won't take phone calls, but nobody's calling anymore. It's all email and web. So I just assume give that out. And obviously I'm a big LinkedIn. Well, not obviously, but I am a big LinkedIn guy. So you can always check me out on LinkedIn. Just type my name in and you can see all the stuff I'm doing. Yeah, I think it's Steve, uh, you know, LinkedIn.com forward slash in forward slash Steve Fretzen. Um, you also have a, a YouTube channel and that is uh, at Sales Results Inc. Uh, the, old, the old name, the old name. I still haven't changed the <laughs> changed <it. laughs> I with lawyers, right? It, it, entrepreneur's dream name. The uh, lawyers hated it. Yeah. And it's, it's, um, Branding's amazing things, and it's easy, it, it, you know. And, and at the at the same token, so basically, you're out there, right? So, and and, and fortunately, I think your name's unique enough that uh, if, they're, if they're typing in your name, and, and I just wanted to say uh, to compliment you on your website because that's you know after Allison had recommended you, that's the first place that I went, um, and and I really appreciate. Um, the simplicity and the and and the directness of of the site, um, as well as frankly, you know, uh, for my age, the font size is large enough that I can actually read stuff. <laughs> um, and, uh, uh, and 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 you've got a podcast, as you said, you've got uh, you know a hundred people, so a hundred a uh, hundred times that you've done this before. Uh, well, I've got I've got over two hundred and fifty episodes. We just celebrated wow. that in just under three years. Wow. So that's putting incredible. out a ton of content, interviewing amazing people. I got to get you on there, Mark. You're, you're, you're going to be my next victim. So prepare for I, that. I, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm happy to do it. I, I'm more than happy to do it, but you're, but you're uh, anyway, and you feature your podcast on your website. People don't even have to have a podcast platform that they pay attention. They can just go to your website and, 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 and listen in to any of the, any of the podcasts that you've got there. So that's fantastic. Um, is there anything in closing that you wanted to, you know, a, a final tip or suggestion for people that uh, in this day and age where we're doing a lot of consults via Zoom and, and we're, et cetera, for that person who doesn't want to sell but wants to get the business? Yeah, I would say, you know, that, that there's a lot of information on YouTube, books, articles, coaches, you know, podcasts that provide information that's going to help you be successful to be that lawyer, someone that people are talking about, that's making it rain, that's bringing in the business, that's, you know, driving control and freedom in your future. If that isn't doing it for you, you're not getting enough out of that, then talk to someone like Mark or myself. And there's, I'm friends with most of the coaches around the country. We're all good for, we're all friendly. And our job, our mindset is like, we'll help you. You know, if it's, if you need a 30 minute meeting to just give you some advice and direction, we'll do it. If you want to engage us and go through a more formal program, that's going to get you to the next level, then we'll do that. But I think, you know, just kind of like keeping your head down and hoping that business development just goes away. I think you're, you're really missing the, the, the gist and the direction of the world because it's right. not, that's good. That is the future of legal with, you know, especially with all the technology changes and automations and 
you know, the fact that that non-lawyers are now able to get involved in legal in some states. Uh, this is not going to get easier, folks. Right. So um, just just make sure that you make business development and marketing video, whatever it is, a part of your job as a lawyer, not just lawyering. Absolutely. And, and, and an excellent way to close. Um, it's, it's not, it's not something that, you know, is somewhere on the bottom of the priority list. It's actually part of who you need to be and what you need to be doing, uh, on, on a regular basis is, uh, um, and just making it part of, of, of who you are, um, develop those habits. And if you need somebody to help you develop those habits and get some direction on that, I think you, you, you can't go wrong with, uh, with reaching out to Steve. Steve, it's been a pleasure to have you. Um, uh, I do accept. Uh, <laughs> I'd love to be on on yours at some point in the future. And uh, um, uh, it was great having you. And um, I encourage you folks to stay on for just a moment longer. There's going to be a, a, an outro reel. We can tell you how to subscribe, et cetera. Um, but this is this is the cal Steve is the caliber of people that that we have on and. Um, uh, make sure that you do subscribe and follow us um, so that you can get more great information like this and meet more great people like Steve. Thank you, Steve. Hey, thank you, Mark. You've been listening to Inspiring Business with your host, Mark Bullock. Your positive comments, likes, and most importantly, your sharing of this show with others is greatly appreciated. Don't forget to subscribe to the Inspiring Business Podcast on whatever platform you prefer. You can catch prior episodes on videosocials.net and on YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, and all the major podcast platforms.